Aloha, my internet family. How are you? Welcome back to Practical Printing. Thanks for tuning in to part five of our Moai series. When we finished up part four, we had finished building the frame to this point. We had installed the pivoting bracket and the Z-axis. Today we're going to install the rise motor that moves this pivoting bracket up and, up and down and start assembling some of the body plates. So you ready? Let's go do it. Okay, so as with the other videos in the series, I've went ahead and pulled out the parts that we're going to use for this segment of the videos. So in today's, what we need is the riser motor, which looks something like that. We're going to need this little latch bracket. It has a hook on it, looks like that. Going to need this pair of brackets that look like that. One of them has four holes, the other one has two. And we're going to need a bunch of M320, M325, M36 screws to put all this together. I have also pulled out the, the platform cover, the bottom and the front pieces as we're going to put those on here as well. So I'm going to set these aside just so they rattle a little bit less until we need them. And I'm going to go ahead and rotate the printer down into, ouch, a position so that we can work in here. Uh, that did pivot. By the way, I did mention in the middle of the last video that I was going to check on where this should be positioned in here. I was going to check with Pio, uh, Polly on that. And I actually had the opportunity to have dinner with Mark from Pio Polly last night. So he clarified that for me in person. The trick to it is there's this latch here which is going to line up with that latch that we're going to assemble down there. And there's a piece on the bottom of this that the motor will thread into. So this left and right will actually be relative to lining it up with the motor pieces. So I'm going to leave that down for now. And we're going to go ahead and grab this motor. And pull it out of the Ziploc bag. We're going to tuck the cable down out of the way as much as possible. And you can see there's two tabs on the back there and this on the front. And we're going to grab these two brackets here. Now, this tells me that the, the bracket with the larger hole goes in first, like so, and then that the smaller hole goes over top of it like that. And this is going to get secured to the frame using two of the M325. So let's set the, this here for now. We have our M325. We're going to go ahead and pull out two of these. Grab the correct size hex wrench so that we have that ready to go. And we're going to feed these up through here. Just to make sure everything lines up nice. Through the holes and it's going to assemble like this to the top part of here. So let's go ahead and rotate this back up. Okay, we're going to
We're going to line this up, drop it through here, and bolt it down. Now, what I don't know is which direction the motor goes. Oh, this actually looks a little bit different. Then I take that back. This goes on the bottom. Not the top, this goes on the bottom. So it's going to go like this. So. And it looks like, yep. And it looks like we want the wire going towards the center. So. Like so. And rotate this so that you can see how it looks on the bottom. The bottom side will look like that with the cable towards the middle. Okay, so now let's flip this back around. And our next step is going to be hand turn the long screw so that it goes up into this riser piece. And it sounds like this is where that comes into play to be able to move that back and forth. And this is going to thread up in the, there, move the beam up to a point where the unthreaded metal cylinder touches the silver metal part. So I can't zoom in to show you that there. It's too little too small, but let's see if I can try to get you a better angle on that camera. If you can see it there, this basically turns up until it touches there. And then we're going to tighten this up. I believe that's the smaller wrench. As a kind of like a set screw here on the side. So this is where we make sure that it is straight left and right. The part that we had discussed yesterday. And now that it is, now we can tighten up these screws that you can't see. Now we can tighten up these screws with the right size wrench. Now we can tighten up these screws to snug it down on the rod to keep it from sliding back and forth. OK, that's done. Let's move on to the next part, which is that hook. The little hook here is going to go on the front here, and it touches into that that. that. OK, so we're going to grab our two M36 screws. And we're going to tighten that key hook on there. One, two screws. Get the proper size wrench. Try not to drop the screws. Okay, those two are done. Okay, we're back to the frame now. And so we need the bottom piece. 
And as pointed out, the bottom piece has a prominent protrusion here that for a screw. So we're going to need this bottom piece and we are going to need eight of the M320 screws on each side to secure four sides. Two screws per side. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So M320 are these guys. I'm going to pull out eight of those. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We'll set this bag back aside here. Make sure that we have the proper size tool. And we're going to see how this fits in the frame. Okay, so I am going to orient the frame so that the motor is facing me, the one that we just put in, which I'm looking at the right side. Put the screws in front and back in first. If the left and the right bars were not perfectly aligned, this is our chance to make those right. Okay, so we're going to slide this in and does not fit that way. So it should fit this way. Now, per the picture, I have the extrusion here, which you can't see un underneath this thing. But the extrusion is down here, so this would be the front right corner is where that bump goes. And we're going to feed these in from the outside. To try to use the tool here, uh, the hex wrench, to just get them started to make sure that we have that we're grabbing it. This might even be easier if I stand this up like this. started. Okay, that takes care of the bottom pan. Now let's move on to the front panel. The front panel looks like this. Let me hold it up. And you'll see it has the cutouts for the, the locks and the LCD screen. So the front panel is going to go in to the front lower section, I believe, like so. And we're going to have two each on the left and right side and one each on the top and the bottom of these M20s. There we have it. It's starting to look more like a printer, just a bit. Let's uh, lay this down here. Just a bit starting to look more like a printer, huh? Okay, so our next step is to organize the cables. And I'm hoping that you can see this, but it basically wants us to pull them through a hole here on this outside edge um, of this bracket that the motor went on. So we're going to drop that down through there. We're going to pull this end stop cable just down the back like we had talked about before. 
and the other stepper cable is there as well. Now, it's not calling for any zip ties on these right now, so I'm just going to leave these cables loose um, and may zip tie them up to tidy them up a little bit more at a later time. And our last piece here is we are going to install the platform cover for here. Now this is going to be a little bit more challenging, I believe. It is going to slide in this way. And it should drop in flush in the front and the sides. This is going to take four of the screws of the M320s. It's basically two on each side. Okay, that's about wraps it up for episode five. Today we got all the body panels installed as well as the motor for driving the platform up and down. In our next episode, we are going to move on to starting to install the electronics down in this lower cavity and possibly some of the side body panels. So that's it for today on Practical Printing. We hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and Tag that bell down below if you'd like to get notified as soon as the next episode of the Moai series is up. With that, I bid you aloha.